Hello everyone, I'm Mark with Corelight. Today I'm going to provide a quick overview of the SSL log. The SSL log contains information about the SSL or TLS encrypted connections that are observed by a Corelight sensor. Even though these sessions are encrypted, there is still a lot of interesting information in the clear and some that can be inferred from the packet characteristics. Like all Zeek logs, the SSL log has a UID, or unique identifier, which allows for fast pivoting to and from other related logs for the same session, such as the con log. There is some generic connection information which is present in the SSL log to identify the source and destination of the connection. In addition, however, there are many SSL-specific details which can aid in the incident response and hunting processes. First, there is the SSL or TLS version information, as well as the cipher suite in use, which were negotiated at the start of the connection. You can use this to hunt for the use of old, insecure protocols and ciphers in your network. Next, some of the details of the server certificate are present in the SSL log. There is even more detail of the certificate in the X509 log. We will take a look at that in another video. The certificate information in the SSL log can help a hunter look for anomalous behavior. For example, here we can see that a self-signed certificate was used and that the details of the certificate and the signing authority both look fake and highly suspect. The SSL log also includes the FUID, or File Unique Identifier, which identifies the certificate chain in use by the server. Like the UID, this can be used to pivot to other logs, such as the X509 log, to look at the certificate in more detail. The flexibility of Zeek and Corelight means that scripts can be used to extend the logs to do new and interesting things. For example, here the log entries have extra fields with the JA3 hashes for the server and client. These hashes are calculated by observing the choices that servers and clients make during connection negotiation. Without digging too deep into specifics, if two endpoints have the same JA3 hash, they are likely to be running the same software. And some malicious programs have a distinct JA3 signature that can be used to identify them. Here also, we can see that the sensor that processed this session made use of the Corelight Encrypted Traffic Collection, a set of packages that looks for interesting characteristics of encrypted traffic. This field, and its value of false, indicates that this session does not appear to contain a response to a DNS over HTTPS query. You can use this to identify whether clients in your network are using DNS over HTTPS to encrypt their DNS traffic, which would otherwise limit your visibility via the DNS log. Look for a future video with a more in-depth look into the encrypted traffic collection. Corelight sensors make it easy to enable and disable desired functionality and packages so that you can customize your NDR stack to your exact needs, and as your needs grow, it can grow with you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Corelight representative. We are stronger when we defend together.